Okay, we, we move on with uh, a, a case of uh, a patient uh, with uh, uh, a, an advanced melanoma, developing an advanced melanoma. This, is, uh, this was a, a 51-year-old female, Caucasian, and uh, uh, her medical history was uh, uh, characterized by an anxiety depressive disorder um, in therapy, uh, allergic asthma, but no other relevant comorbidities. And uh, in February 2010, uh, she was asymptomatic and uh, uh, noticed uh, a, an enlarging pigmented lesion of the left uh, submammary uh, region and uh, it was uh, growing quite fast and uh, it was uh, um, excised, uh, showing a superficial spreading melanoma whose Breslow was uh, 3.2 millimeters ulcerate, ulcerated uh, with uh, uh, high mitosis and uh, Clark of uh, 3. Um, the, uh, the, the preoperative CT scans was negative for metastatic disease, so she went, uh, uh, she went through a local excision and the sentinel node biopsy uh, showing uh, um, negative lymph nodes uh, in the intramammary nodes and the uh, and axilla. Uh, so the final stage that was uh, uh, 2B, uh, since it was uh, a T3B uh, for ulceration and mitosis, no lymph nodes and no metastasis. She underwent regular follow-up and uh, uh, no, uh, she received no further treatment at this time. Francesco, may I ask you if this uh, is still the state of the art or if there are some uh, trials ongoing for these patients uh, as adjuvant or it is? Uh, well, um, you have to consider that this is a, a, a nodal negative patient, so the stage is uh, considered quite initial. And uh, we have a study uh, for a stage 2B uh, using um, vitamin D as uh, a possible uh, treatment uh, uh, to prevent uh, recurrence. Then there is uh, a trial from the OTC who use uh, the uh, pegylated interferon and uh, is uh, mainly f dedicated to, the, to uh, ul ulcerated uh, uh, primaries. And uh, uh, most of the trial uh, were for uh, the nodal positive patients, and uh, we participated to the Ipilimumab adjuvant trial, uh, and results uh, show that uh, in, nogat in negative, in uh, nodal positive patients, the uh, Ipilimumab could uh, prevent the uh, recurrence. So, uh, to add to that, the uh, the study. Uh Luigi is referring to is the URTC 18081 study, which is a study of two years of adjuvant uh, pegylated interferon weekly versus observation for patients with a T2 to T4, but then all uh, B, so they have to have ulceration, N0, so they have to be staged with a sentinel node. Uh, and that is based on the uh, meta-analysis of uh, uh, 7,500 patients from all sorts of uh, adjuvant interferon studies in melanoma, so intermediate dose, high dose, uh, pegylated interferon, uh, two of the ERTC studies are included there, but also other studies from across the world, where if you look into the subgroup analysis, you see that the effect of adjuvant interferon is not present in patients with palpable nodal disease, is somewhat present in patients with central node positive disease, but the most of the effect with the hazard ratio of 0.7 and a large significance is in the primary ulcerated N0 patients. And that was actually uh, why the FDA uh, thought it was mandatory to have a, a verification study on this topic, which is now ongoing uh, within the EURTC. Uh, so that's, that's that. And uh, what I thought was quite striking is that there was only an H&E staining done of the central node, which is not quite common nowadays. Usually we would also, or maybe the pathologist can comment on that, do an S100 or a Melan A, uh, HMB45 staining, always. 
of course. We 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 never trust only on hematoxylineosin when we are looking at li lymph node biopsy. We always perform immunohistochemistry for at least two of the markers that I mean, melanin A and S100. Okay. So we went on with the case and we reached March 2013, um, when uh, this patient. Uh, progressively lost her interest in most of the activities she has previously enjoyed, um, such as her work and relationships. Uh, she was uh, admitted to hospital with uh, complaints of uh, extreme fatigue, abdominal pain. She has anxieties, uh, asthenia, and uh, uh, laboratory investigations uh, uh, showed uh, anemia, hypokalemia, and uh, um, so she received supportive care including blood transfusion, hydration. And uh, the CT scan performed in that occasion showed uh, a, a multiple uh, bulky bilateral hepatic lesion. The maximum diameter of the biggest one was 10 centimeters, uh, showing no brain metastasis. Uh, at this point, we had to decide which, uh, uh, which, which could be the best uh, uh, treatment for her. Uh, she was obviously a stage 4 M1C, since it involved the liver, and uh, uh, the LDH, which is another parameter of high risk and uh, low uh, response to treatment, was very high. And uh, she has uh, um, some alteration of the liver functional test, and the ECOG uh, was uh, quite bad. Uh, fortunately for the patient, uh, uh, we find a mutation uh, of the BRAF gene, V600E uh, mutation, and uh, so uh, we think that uh, it was uh, uh, the best option to offer to her in that, pe in that moment, uh, the monotherapy with uh, uh, the brafony, but within a, a named patient program which was available at that time. Uh, the goal of uh, and the rationale for this decision was, was that we were facing a rapidly growing thum tumor. Uh, we needed a, a fast, hopefully, a fast uh, uh, decrease uh, in the uh, tumor bulk. And uh, the patient was uh, young and uh, was uh, uh, with a bad performance status, which means that uh, she probably would never have uh, uh, the opportunity to receive a benefit from an immunotherapy, which at that time was uh, ipilimumab, and uh, uh, you all know that uh, is working uh, quite slowly. So the therapeutic uh, decision was shared with uh, the patient, with uh, her family, and we decided to uh, treat, the, treat her with uh, dabrafenib, which is uh, the um, anti-BRAF treatment in uh, BRAF inhibitor. Francesco. This is uh, for sure a very, let's say, bad case uh, with a uh, large uh, tumor burden. Uh, I would like to ask you, and uh, um, is there any role for surgery in uh, oligometastatic disease, uh, melanoma, let's say just one single lesion of two centimeters, is there a role of surgery? Well, um, I have to say that uh, melanoma is uh, uh, the... the, the the perfect gene for, for us to, to work together in the sense that uh, uh, there, are, there is the, the, the necessity to discuss all the cases and sometimes we find that uh, surgery could be the right choice. Um, Alexander showed in his uh, talk that uh, there are opportunity for treating lesions which are limited to one heart, one heart <laughs> one leg or, uh, or um, a, a in this case uh, it's possible uh, to um, perform first uh, um, surgery and then maybe uh, a general systemic treatment. Uh, there is a second opportunity for surgery uh, since we uh, are using those drugs that are really helpful in reducing the tumor bulk. Uh, surgery could be the right choice when uh, uh, the disease uh, uh, is uh, reducing and maybe it remains uh, limited to one single or a couple of, of lesions. 
so I think that the, the, the answer, the right answer is that we, uh, is yes, <laughs> but we have to uh, continuously uh, exchange our experience and uh, talk each other to, to choose the right moment. Uh, I think surgery could be best, best uh, after a treatment, like in this case, if uh, uh, the lesion are remaining just two, then uh, the problem here was that the, 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 the liver was uh, uh, occupied by, in, in both the lobes, <laughs> by two big lesions. But sometimes it's, it's possible to find just one. No, uh, for sure. I, I, I totally agree with uh, Pierre Luigi that uh, we, we should do uh, together a combined approach to these kind of patients. There is some limited data and obviously only retrospective data on patients where we have done surgery for oligometastatic disease. Uh, and these are highly selected, so you have a, a, a clear selection bias. But then, obviously, the patients with one solitary lesion, and uh, if the interval between their primary melanoma and this metastatic lesion is long, uh, and you can do a complete surgical resection of, of a solitary lung nodule, for instance, then they have the best chance of uh, curation, whilst if the interval becomes shorter, or you have two or three lesions, the uh, chance that it will be successful becomes, uh, becomes less. And um, in this case, obviously, it was not resectable. Uh, that's clear. And uh, perhaps you have one clone, which will then eventually become resistant to this dabrafenib therapy, and then we would then again sit around the table, look at the images and discuss if it then is worthwhile to take out that one clone which is no longer uh, responding to the treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the point is that we uh, have to do all we can to, um, to, to help the patient uh, becoming free of disease. Uh, so this is the, the first point and the first uh, uh, goal. Uh, when it's possible, this is obviously a, a, a good chance for, for the patient. So, um, the, this patient achieved a partial response. As you can see, the diameters of the lesions reduced, uh, the biggest one from 10 centimeters to 5.5. Uh, there was a complete disappearance of peripatic and perisplenic ascites. And at uh, this point, uh, uh, if it was available, but it was not, uh, it would be it would have been a good choice to add uh, a tram trametinib treatment with uh, uh, so an anti mac a mac inhibitor in order to um, augment the re the results and potentiate the the efficacy of a single drug anyway uh, what we uh, were um, obliged to do was to continue the rabrafenib treatment and the patient just after one month was becoming, um, let's say, normal in, uh, in his performance status. So, so uh, she was able to uh, begin again her normal activities. Uh, the ECOG uh, passed from three to zero. Liver function tests were normalized and uh, there was no uh, significant toxicity, so we could continue at the full dose of treatment. And uh, apart from uh, grade one arthralgia and uh, grade one skin rash, which completely regressed with symptomatic therapy. So, so, so what do you also then consider, because you considered trametinib to consolidate the mm -hmm. therapy? So you've now made a bad tumor into a good tumor, and probably the LDH also dropped to normal levels. Mm -hmm. So maybe th did you also consider that to be m perhaps the window to start in, in that time period IPI in mm -hmm. this patient? Yes, as you, uh, as you will see, uh, she will receive IPI at the moment of uh, her progression. Um, I was mentioning uh, anti-MEC therapy because we know that uh, uh, it's possible to have a synergistic effect uh, even during uh, dabrafenib or anti-BRAF uh, uh, treatment. And uh, in that case, uh, if, if it was uh, available, it would have been a good choice in order to uh, continue the, uh, the response and maybe to, uh, to have a, a better response. 
Anyway, um, in October 2013, the patient uh, stopped uh, the treatment due to disease progression. Uh, this progression was uh, in, within the liver and the brain, even if uh, the um, metastatic lesion in the brain didn't give uh, symptoms, specific symptoms. Uh, she received the whole brain radiotherapy and uh, um, we decided to move forward with the treatment with uh, ipilimumab, which was started uh, in December 2013. Uh, she received the classical four doses, three milligrams per kilo. Uh, she didn't um, experience any uh, adverse event. And um, the rationale for this choice was uh, based mainly on the possible synergistic effect with the radiotherapy. We know that uh, uh, radiotherapy uh, could, uh, um, could um, offer new antigen to the immune system to be recognized. And so um, there are data showing that radiotherapy could be efficacy, uh, efficacious um, with, uh, uh, together with the immunotherapy. Uh, then uh, the, the other point was that the patient was in good general condition and so we have uh, the opportunity to perform the whole treatment without interruption and we know that uh, ipilimumab uh, has uh, a chance to work uh, uh, especially when uh, you succeed in performing the whole treatment of four doses. So um, moreover she was steroid free and this is considered at least at the beginning of the treatment one uh, uh, another point uh, of um, possible efficacy. So in March 2014 uh, the CT scan of uh, re-evaluation showed that uh, there was uh, a partial res response in the liver and at the brain uh, the uh, disease was stable. Uh, we continue to uh, uh, follow up the patient and uh, afterward, she, um, she has uh, a, another uh, progression, mainly in the liver, and uh, she was able to receive the uh, anti-PD-1 treatment. So in conclusion, uh, we, I would like to underline the fact that uh, treatment with the anti-BRAF uh, drugs could uh, uh, easily and quickly um, improve the performance status of this patient and uh, this is why we usually choose this kind of drugs as a first choice when there is a, an extensive uh, disease uh, rapidly growing and uh, um, in this case the patient uh, was able to come back to her normal life and uh, the uh, performance status remained quite stable during the following two years. Um, moreover, uh, this treatment uh, with uh, uh, targeted therapy uh, permitted the patient to receive also immune treatment and uh, uh, in this case we, uh, we perform a, a sort of a sequential treatment which was uh, um, a good choice uh, and uh, permitted her to, to prolong her progression-free survival. I would stop here, and uh, if there is any question. Thank you very much. Are there questions from the floor? I just have, I just have a short question. Is there any role in re-biopsying uh, the metastatic lesion, as in other tumors, to look for uh, 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 mutations? Yes, <laughs> I would say yes, in the sense that uh, um, it is uh, a, a good option to, to re-challenge the presence of uh, a mutation, especially when uh, it, is, it is not found in, uh, in the first evaluation. Um, it's not so common, but it's possible that uh, metastasis could uh, develop uh, uh, mutation uh, um, instead the, 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 the primary don't, when the primary don't. Um, in this case, uh, uh, we knew that the mutation was present, and usually mutations are mutually exclu exclusive. So if there is the BRAF mutation, there is no CKIT or and RAS one. Uh, so in this specific case, uh, I think that biopsy, a new biopsy would 
not that, you know. Okay, then I think that uh, in perfect time we can close the session and uh, thank you for uh, your attendance and uh, your comments and your participation and uh, have a nice day. Thank you.